Hello and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Michelle and I work in the reputation and brand management department at Fanshawe and I will be your host for this evening's session. So before we begin the session, I just wanted to review a few housekeeping items. Audience webcams and mics are turned off for the session. If you have any questions throughout the session, please submit it using the questions feature. And to open the questions feature, click on the question mark. Following the session, we will have a live Q&A from the questions submitted. We will do our best to get through all of your submitted questions within the session time. If you do have any questions that you think about maybe afterwards, you can always reach out to us at myfuture at fanshawc.ca. If you have multiple programs open and running right now, it may compromise your webinar experience. So we just ask that you would take a moment uh, to close those now. I'd now like to introduce Curtis, who will be speaking about the Architectural Technology Program. I will be back again for the live Q&A, and right now I am going to pass it over to Curtis. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you uh, for coming. Uh, hopefully I can put uh, a few answers to some of the questions that you might have by the end of today's session. Um, so again, as Michelle said, my name is Curtis Vandenbroek. I'm the academic coordinator for the Architectural Technology Program. Um, I also teach in obviously the architectural program as well as our construction programs. Um, normally my office would be in T building, which of course is kind of closed at the moment working virtually for, for some of that aspect of it. Um, but you can see my email address there. Um, if for some reason you do have any further questions uh, that you might need answered uh, beyond today's uh, conversation, uh, you're welcome to send me an email and hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions at that point. <clears throat> Uh, just a little quick uh, about our faculty and, and, and what you would experience uh, as a student with us. There are six of the faculty members, full-time faculty members, are architectural technology, uh, technologists themselves. We, um, most of us, with the exception of one, actually graduated from Fanshawe College, uh, the architectural technology program. Uh, we actually have one architectural technologist who graduated from Fanshawe has since turned uh, or become an architect. Um, we have another architect uh, with our faculty as well, and we have three engineers. Two of them are um, structural engineers, one is a uh, civil engineer. Okay, um, so we all are, again, experienced, obviously, in our different fields. Back in 2009, we won the President's Distinguished Program Award. Um, every year, uh, the President uh, picks a program, um, kind of a distinguished program, and we were the recipients of the award back in 2009. <clears throat> Uh, our program is a three-year program. It's an advanced diploma program. Uh, you're probably aware of that, um, which basically includes six academic semesters. Um, those semesters, you can see in the little uh, image there on the on the slide, uh, we have different patterns, um, different academic streams that the students uh, would be placed into. Now, generally speaking, they don't get a choice as to what stream they get placed into. It's kind of um, it's actually up to myself, the coordinator's uh, job to sort of put them into one of these academic streams. It doesn't really matter too much because it's essentially a three year from start to finish. Uh, of course, if they start in fall, they would finish in, uh, they would finish basically at the end of summer into 2023. Now, in this case, uh, you guys are starting in, in the winter of 21. So uh, you would actually finish in uh, the fall of 2023. So you can see there's a little different pattern. So anyone starting, of course, in January, if, if that's uh, if anyone listening here, start looking at a January start. Um, basically, your pattern goes first, second, third semester, all three semesters in a row followed up by a co-op and then followed up by four fourth semester co-op fifth semester co-op sixth semester and then complete so um, not sure if some are looking for a winter start uh, if you're looking for September start of course there's three different patterns and those are kind of randomly placed um, but like I said regardless it doesn't make too much difference because it's still ultimately three exact calendar years from start to finish uh, you will end up with three co-op placements uh, over those uh, three calendar years. So it's really 24 months of school and 12 months of co-op um, sp spread over those three three years. Um, you can see that most of the, all of the three streams that do start in the fall have an eight-month co-op placement followed or 
prior uh, a four month co-op placement so there's a four and an eight month um, if you end up starting in the winter semester it's just actually broken up into three individual four month co-ops okay but regardless it's the same amount of co-op um, patterning okay so that's a little bit about our, our academic streams and our co-op patterning um, as I said uh, those are also paid co-op positions um, the career path the architectural technology program um, is literally a, a fantastic program as far as your opportunities beyond once you graduate and what you might uh, end up doing as far as your career um, there's all kinds of different avenues that you could look at of course architectural technologists but you can get into you know a facilities manager you can get right into construction uh, project management possibly even real estate um, in some cases both you could be an architectural technologist and a real estate consultant on the side um, project coordinator we get into BIM specialist which is uh, modeling um, again there's all kinds of different things working for engineers etc so you're not really necessarily pigeonholed into a specific field um, like a lot of some other programs might they might be kind of very discipline specific there's a lot of different doors that open uh, from this particular program uh, a lot of that is also based on your software experience that you get from this program that can lead you down uh, many of these different paths uh, our skills so we compete uh, annually with the exception of 2020 unfortunately our current pandemic uh, did cancel our, our skills competition um, back in the winter it happens usually in the winter semester um, but Fanshawe has been competing we started in 2011 in uh, in what we call the skills competition so there's an Ontario or a provincial skills and then there's a national skills where the top participant in the province goes and and competes nationally with other colleges across the country. Um, you can see basically our resume since we started in 2011. Um, so the, the upper half of the screen says Ontario Skills Competition. You can see how many gold medals uh, we've won since 2011 when we started. So 2011, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, we, we won gold medals. If you win gold medals uh, in the Ontario skills competition, you get to go and compete nationally. The only way for you to compete nationally is to win the gold medal in the in the province. Um, so we've gone and we've participated uh, nationally. Um, so of the, what is it, seven times that we've won gold medals in Ontario, we've gone to the nationals and competed against the entire country. And we've won gold medals in four of those seven years as well. Um, you can see that the other years that we went um, competing nationally, if we didn't go get gold, we still did place on the podium as well. So there's, uh, you can see we've got a couple of silver medals and a bronze medal there. So even our first year, our first year attempting national skills, um, we ended up with the silver medal, medal, gold of course, provincially and and uh, silver medal nationally. So um, Fanshawe is literally nationally recognized um, our college for architectural technology is definitely on the national map um, you could go to a lot of the com kind of competing colleges around the province and around the country with architectural technology and they would definitely know Fanshawe's reputation because of our reputation at skills um, Again, it's kind of unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to go to skills in 2020 because I, I do feel actually pretty optimistic that we would have likely probably got a gold uh, a gold medal in, in the provincials. And I mean, who knows nationally, but probably a likely a podium finish again there as well. So um, a little bit of a bummer that there's a little gap there and we won't have that year to experience it. But uh, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to maybe have a competition in the winter if we're if we're able to sort of figure out how to do it safely uh, with with the current situation. So, anyways, I'd, I'd like to point this one out. This is a really good conversation to have because if you are kind of between some of the other colleges uh, in the province, um, Fanshawe, like I said, pretty much tops the tops the colleges as far as our reputation um, for the architectural technology program. Um, we are sought after from literally employers all over the province um, employers that have their own colleges with their own architectural technology programs in those colleges and they still come specifically looking for Fanshawe students uh, to fill those those employment opportunities so um, 
this kind of speaks for itself a little bit. Um, and again, I, I just like to kind of point that out. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely a really good one for you to experience uh, or to know um, if you're kind of in between uh, college decisions. Okay, uh, this particular, I just wanted to show you a few pictures because unfortunately the downside uh, of not having a true um, in-person open house, normally I would be able to take you through the, uh, our sort of work environment, our, our classrooms, show you what it would be like to be a student in the classroom and, and give you kind of that experience and see the college itself. Um, and, and unfortunately, obviously we can't do that right now. So I tried to capture a few images um, to show you what it will be like. Um, we are running our course our classes in the classroom um, about half of them about 50% of the classes that we have in architectural technology are still in the classroom um, the only difference that you would see from these pictures is of course students and faculty would be wearing masks in the classroom currently um, but these are our labs so you can see uh, the students working at the computers there um, those are the classrooms that you will spend majority of your time in those are our CAD labs uh, that's where you'll spend your time learning software you'll be working on our design and project um, courses uh, those particular courses are nine hours a week uh, just that course alone so again that's nine hours a week just in the computer lab for that one course uh, as well as homework and stuff that would normally be spent in there um, and then there's a couple of pictures there you can see where there's a couple students wearing um, some oculus some doing some virtual reality uh, when we get into sixth semester, uh, the student on the bottom left-hand side of the picture there, you can see the drawing, um, they actually model their, their drawing so um, they can then take that model and they can plug it into a virtu virtual reality and they can actually walk through their own building as if that building is truly there. Um, they can have de decor and everything set up it can actually have interior finishes and, and literally look like that building is built and pretend that you're walking through that actual building rather than just looking at it from you know through the outside of a computer screen um, so there's a little cool opportunity for that too for the students to be able to kind of see what they've done and actually almost place themselves virtually inside that actual building and, and see what it looks like kind of from the inside so a, a pretty cool opportunity that way but Again, I wanted to try to capture uh, basically in an essence what it looks like in the classroom. You will still have this experience whether it's January or September. I mean, unless something crazy happens obviously between then, but um, we do plan on running classes, uh, at least half of our classes in the classroom, um, especially our core project-based classes and software classes, because it's essential for you to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one experience with the teacher. Class sizes in those classes are no more than 30 people. Um, you can see that the desk spaces are quite large and spread out, so there's a lot of space, even with our current situation, having to wear masks. Um, they're actually about six feet apart each computer station anyway, so yes, there's 30 people in the classroom, but there's lots of separation and a lot of opportunity for everybody to kind of have their distance, um, even given the current situation. So I believe that's it. So yeah, our location, of course, is on main campus. Um, we are the main campus right on uh, 1001 Fanshawe College Boulevard, um, just off of Oxford Street. Okay, and again, uh, thanks again for listening in. At this point, I'm, I'm going to uh, start fielding any questions that you might have. If you have any other questions, of course, there's the uh, the email again, myfutureatfanshawe.ca, um, and you can or you can book an appointment at fanshawe.ca uh, slash connect to try to get uh, any other questions that you might have as well. All right, so that's it for me, Michelle. Awesome. Thank you, Curtis, for providing such insightful information about your program. So we're now actually going to move into the live Q&A portion um, of this evening. So if you want to ask a question, please submit it with the questions feature. And to open the questions feature, just click on the question mark. So it looks like we have a few questions that have come in. So we are going to start. So are the co-op placements paid positions? Yes, the co-op uh, placements are paid positions. Um, they, of course, range depending on where you, you find your jobs. Of course, if you find a job in Toronto uh, versus potentially a job in London or a job in Windsor or Sarnia, uh, you know, there's a good chance that the hourly rate will, will vary a little bit, but it's fairly competitively, um, it's fairly competitive rate. Um, and you can, of course, also go and find your own co-op placement if you know somebody that's connected to the industry as well and bring that forward as a, as a co-op placement. 
Awesome. That's great. Always love to hear when that uh, they're paid for sure makes a big difference for students. Um, so we got another question about co-op actually. Um, are the students placed into a co-op or do they find their own or how does that process work? So the co-op, uh, th we have a bunch of regular uh, employers that do post co-op positions with us uh, on an basically on a semester basis. So they almost ver habitually fall, winter, summer, uh, they are looking for, for co-op students. So those employers will actually contact our, our co-op uh, consultant, uh, Joe Teodoro, um, and they bring the, the, the co-op opportunities to him and then he makes those available for students to apply. We do not actually physically put students into the placements. Um, it's still up to them to, you know, look for the jobs that are being posted on the website. Uh, they can apply themselves. We do find a lot. Oftentimes, we actually have um, more co-op placements than we even have students applying. We actually have that current situation right now. So there's more there's more jobs available than there are students applying for those jobs. Um, having said that, I like to put a little kind of caveat on this because um, our jobs can potentially be all over the province. Uh, like I said, Fanshawe students, our architectural technology students are, are pretty sought after, you know, all over the province. And, you know, some of those job opportunities might be Toronto, some, they might be Ottawa, uh, they could be Windsor, Tor um, wherever GTA, of course. Um, so, you know, there also has to be sometimes a little bit of a flexibility. Um, you know, it, we might only have like, 15, 20, 30 jobs uh, in posted in London for a student. And, you know, we might have anywhere from 50 to 100 students looking for a job. So not everybody is going to get, obviously, a posting in, in London. So I always like to say to everybody, you know, if you can be a little bit more open-minded and a little bit more flexible as to where you might be applying, uh, your odds of getting a job are significantly increased. Um, I would say that it's probably almost guaranteed if you're willing to be flexible and not just look specifically in London. <laughs> um, so anyways, just be sort of flexible and you'll almost guarantee yourself a, a job more than likely. For sure, that's awesome information. Uh, good to know. So kind of along those lines as well, we have another question coming in. What is the starting salary and or mid-salary for an architectural technologist? Uh, I mean, those. that's a very loaded question because it can range, uh, again, geographically. If you are in Toronto, the salaries are significantly more than they would be for a base salary starting in London. Um, but again, obviously realizing that the cost of living in Toronto is significantly more than it is in London. So, you know, you might have a student that can go to... Uh, that goes to Toronto and starts with a salary of like $80,000 a year, which seems like a lot, but when you really consider cost of living, apartment expenses and all that stuff there, that six, that $80,000 might be equivalent to like a $50,000 starting salary here. So I, I would say that probably, I, I don't know the official numbers, um, my understanding is, is it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 50, sort of a starting salary in, in our sort of demographic. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we've got a student who is wondering how many hours a week are spent in class or online right now for this program? Uh, so like I said, it's about 50% in class, 50% online. Um, as an example, so I'll just use semester one, of course, that's going to be your first semester. Uh, we have 27 hours of classes um, in semester one. And we have, I got to think about this one for a second. We have 10 hours uh, in the classroom. So 17 are online, 10 hours are physically in the class. The classroom. Now, when you go to second semester, that changes a little bit. Uh, we have a 12, we have, sorry, uh, 13 hours in the classroom and we have about 12 online. So it, it's a little bit more online for the first semester. Just the way that the courses are, there's actually eight courses that you do take in level one, and they're all kind of smaller amounts of time. Um, and a lot of those, like I said, are online. So, uh, whereas once you move into second semester, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, they're virtually all kind of the same. There's a nine hour project based course and a software course, and that is around 12 to 13 hours a week in the classroom right now. So, um, first semester, you'll only be about 10 in the classroom. Okay, thank you for that, it's good to know. So we got another question that's come in and this person's wondering, is there a lot of schoolwork to do outside of the classroom? 
there is um and and again i don't really want to sugarcoat this because you know i feel like that uh, actually scares uh, it, it it's actually worse to find out after the fact so um it is a very heavy workload um it it's not too bad in in the first couple of semesters um but as you do get into the the higher semesters it gets a little bit more difficult not even necessarily difficult but more time consuming um i always say to students it, it's not very difficult work it's just it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time consuming work. Um, you might find yourself literally sitting at a computer working on drawings on your computer um, all night long once in a while. Um, you know, it, we always sort of say it's it's a probably whatever you would spend in the classroom is about what you would spend at home. So if you're 20 hours a week ish in the classroom or classes you might have about 20 hours worth of homework so it, it's a pretty much a full-time job um but it, the work is not difficult you're not like necessarily researching or doing really technical reports and writing a report which you know may be not as enjoyable you, you'll literally be sitting you know music on working away on your computer it, it's actually kind of an enjoyable relaxing kind of homework but it, it is a lot so you know be prepared to you know spend hours and hours and hours a week at the computer working on your drawings and presentations and stuff like that but again it's it's different kind of homework than probably what you would typically think of as homework for sure <laughs> Um, okay so a couple more questions have come in so somebody is wondering um, do they need to have a computer or purchase any specific software for the program? So, of course, with our current situation um, being half the classes online, we, we are not a program that normally requires you to have your own computer or your own device. Um, but because our homework labs at the school, which you would normally have 24-hour access to, are not allowed to be used right now. Um, you're not allowed to basically be at the college unless you're there specifically for a class. Um, unfortunately, you do have to have your own device. Um, now that can be a laptop, it can be a desktop, it doesn't have to be a specific kind of device. Um, but you know, it, you do would have to have something obviously to be able to attend your virtual classes and participate. As far as the software goes, we use two softwares. We use Revit um, and AutoCAD. AutoCAD in the first semesters and then Revit in the later semesters. Um, they're both an Autodesk product. And those softwares are actually provided educational copies for free from the website. So you can actually download those for free uh, off the Autodesk website and they're good for three year license. Um, so you do not have to pay for software, which is actually really nice. And, and that also includes like our Excel and Word um, are also provided as well as free downloads from our student union through our hub. So um, to be honest, there's really no software that you would have to purchase, but you you definitely need to have some kind of a computer or device to to work on your classes virtually and, and work on your drawing uh, projects. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, looks like we've got one last question that has come in. Um, the student is wondering, are there a lot of books or learning materials to purchase alongside with this program? Um, we actually are very sort of shy on as far as purchasing um, books and, and materials and things like that. Um, it's actually even less right now currently because one of the biggest expenses that we have for students um, in the program is is printing drawings um, and having to print hard copies of large format drawings. It's really not that expensive. It's probably about maybe fifty dollars a semester in printing costs, um, but because of the virtual situation that we're dealing with right now and and not well it's not even virtual necessarily that particular course but we're actually marking things electronically just to try to prevent like sharing and contact and all that stuff so uh, there's actually less printing going on right now which potentially might sort of flood over into the future deliveries as well if because faculty are starting to get the hang of just marking it digitally and so you know we actually might reduce printing costs the two biggest uh, print the two biggest other costs that you will have there's a drafting kit that you have to purchase in first semester it's around two or two hundred and fifty dollars I think and it has a whole bunch of kind of drafting supplies it does come with a backpack which comes in handy to carry all your stuff around um, and then the other large expense that we have comes in second semester, which you have to purchase an Ontario building code. And again, it's a 200 plus dollar purchase as well. Um, 
but that's really it. There's a, there's a CAD textbook. If you're coming in September, if you're coming in January, there is a AutoCAD textbook that you do have to purchase. I believe it's in the neighborhood of a hundred dollars. Um, but we're actually looking to phase that book out and introduce it, uh, come September, um, a different way. So there won't be actually a purchasing of books. So honestly, there's, there's very little material textbooks and things like that, that you have to purchase outside of that. I would say in the whole, six semesters you're probably looking at you know maybe six to seven hundred dollars worth of expenses over the three years that's actually really good compared to yeah. some of the programs so it, it is yeah yeah that's awesome and you can always tell the architectural students around campus because they do have the backpacks yeah <laughs> which is awesome <laughs> Um, so it looks like we've reached the end of our session for this evening. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to all of our students that submitted questions, and we hope that we were able to answer all of those questions. Again, if you do think of something, feel free to reach out to Curtis directly, or you can always connect with my future at fanshawc.ca, and we can connect you with Curtis as well. Um, don't forget to check your email because we're actually going to be sending out some details about some of the open house activity that's going to be happening this Saturday. So thank you again to Curtis for taking the time today to speak about the architectural uh, program at Fanshawe College. And I just hope everybody enjoys the rest of their open house. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone.